Hello everybody, it's me, Angel Benton. I bet you thought I was dead, right? I haven't posted in forever. Um, and I'll tell you why, because I've been out of town traveling for work. And here's the thing about traveling for work. Now, first of all, I can't watch the soap operas in the daytime because I'm usually at, at a casino in the daytime. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not home, so I, I don't have, um, the TiVo, so I can't really watch what I've recorded earlier in that day, which is what I normally do when I'm at home. And I'm posting every single day. Well, I couldn't do that. So um, I've been using this weekend to just try to catch up. So I've got a lot to talk about because it's been like three weeks since the last time I posted and a lot's been going on because you know, the soaps are on five days a week. Now, Vanderpump Rules, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Real Housewives of Atlanta, Ladies of London, those are only just on once a week. So that's not gonna be that difficult to catch up on, right? So there's just like four episodes, three episodes, you know, that's nothing. But when you've got 15 hours of uh, television per show to watch, it, it gets a little bit much, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so here's the thing. General Hospital. I, let's talk about all the things that I'm loving right now about General Hospital. Okay, one of the things is that I love Tanya Walker, who plays um, Olivia Jerome. And I am so glad that she's back because she just finally, like, made her um, announcement that she's, or not announcement, but she showed herself as being the one behind the um, the bomb that killed Morgan. And, I mean, we all could see that it was coming, but it was so great. It was great. Now, granted, I still don't, we still don't know a lot about what happened in the meantime. We haven't, the viewers haven't really been shown that much about what happened while she was allegedly dead. We, we're not quite sure. So, hopefully that will be a mystery that unravels later. But I have to say, I love her. I love her. Okay? Um... I loved her back when she was Olivia Jerome, and I loved her at, on One Life to Live as um, Alex Olenoff Hesser Buchanan. Yes. I love her. I just love her. I think she's she can do no wrong. And I don't know where the hell she's been. I'm glad that they got her back, though, because, and this is something that um, Carolyn Hinsey from Soap Opera Digest has mentioned, too, they have been really showing a lot of the flashbacks especially between her and Anna because it's the same actress from 30 years ago they're the same people which is great because a lot of times when you recast a part that means that you are foregoing all of the flashbacks although they did have something and I, I this was kind of when I wasn't really watching the show but they had some sort of episode with all three Carlys so and they were able to make that work I'm not sure how that happened but uh, I, I'm very curious to see. You know what? I'll look that up on YouTube. I'm sure that's on YouTube somewhere, so I'll look up that Carly-centric episode. But anyways, so I'm loving Olivia Jerome. And I love the fact that she has inserted herself into her brother Julian's life as Alexis's sponsor. But she doesn't. she just knows her friend Liv. But here's the thing about that, though. I get, I get that they need, because there's two Olivias on the show now. There's Lisa Locicero, who plays Olivia uh, Falconeri, and then there's Olivia Jerome. So there's two Olivias, which in soap opera land, that really doesn't happen norm that much. So they're calling Olivia Jerome now Liv. Now, personally, I think they should call Olivia Falconeri Liv because Olivia Jerome was around first. I'm just saying. But I also get that they want to kind of disguise her from the public, you know, to the, the, the people that anyone that might know that who actually she is. Um, because she's even said, she's like, the Port Charles is a new town since Will and I was here. And it's true, it's been like 30 years since she's been there. So, um, it's pretty crazy. But there are, but what's funny is that there are still some people who would remember her. Tracy, Monica, uh, Anna, of course. We know we're setting up a big uh, rivalry between, um, Anna. Ava doesn't even know she exists, or does she? I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I, I, that's, again, that's more information than I, because... Are Ava and Julian just half brother and sister, or is she so young that she just barely, I mean, she, there's no way she can be under 30. 
There's no way. So I'm just very curious how that is going to play out, too. I need that explained to me. I need the relationship between Ava, Julian, and Olivia, Jerome, um, explained to me. Because I don't quite get that that much. Anyways, so I'm loving her. I'm loving her return. I'm loving that she's got everyone thinking that Ava is the one who did it. And Ava's like, y'all are crazy. It's, it's great. It's really great. I'm very excited about it. I love it. I love it. Because not only is she going to have her own story with Julian, she's eventually going to have a story with Sonny because Sonny's going to figure it out and he's going to be pissed. And she's also going to have a story with um, Anna. And she's got now she's inserted herself into story with um, Alexis. It's going to be great. I'm very excited about that. I think it's wonderful. I'm, I, I'm in. I'm all in for Olivia Jerome. Okay. Now, moving on. So, I'm kind of going in order of the things I'm the most excited about to the things I'm least excited about. So, the next thing that I'm quasi-excited about is Nell. Okay? Now, a lot of people are like, this looks very familiar. And it does. That's why she's not higher on the list because I'm like, what? This is, we, those of us that saw Carly come on the show, this is all information that we have already seen before. So apparently Nell, Nell's, maybe Nell is Carly's half-sister and her father, well, she's Carly's adopted sister. Let's put it that way because her adopted father is Nell's father, I think. I mean, that hasn't ever been really explained yet, but it took forever just to get that much out. And she's she's seeking revenge on Carly or something. I don't know why, but maybe because she's jealous? I don't know. I don't know why you would be jealous of a mobster's wife. Uh, Brene from Mob Wives, you tell me. <laughs> or, or someone else, you know, Carla. I love me some Carla. I love me some Carla. Uh, she's great. Anyways, okay, so, you know, whatever, but I do like that they are inserting Felicia into the story, which is great. It gives Felicia something to do. She's nosing around Nell's apartment and trying to figure out what's going on. But here's the thing. Nell knows that Felicia's trying to play her, and Nell is right 100% above her and is keeping her thinking, every, finding out things on purpose, like her bra that she bought or... Um, the flowers that she had sent to her, which she did herself, but she, everyone thinks someone named S sent her, which, oh, how funny, that's actually Sonny's initial. Hmm. You know, so in, in some ways that's, that's cool. That's kind of clever, right? But in other ways, it is a little bit of a retread. So it's like, okay, we'll see what's going on with that. But the good news about that too is that Bobby, Bobby, that's why Bobby's never liked her. Never. One time. She's always like, I I've had this happen to me before. So good for her for being like, okay. Okay, so ne next down is uh, Hayden and Finn. Now, I you know I love me some Hayden and Finn. I'm totally down with Hayden and Finn. I love them both. I think it they're great together. It's fine. Um, but now they're playing their relationship against the backdrop of a possible nurse's strike, which uh, that whole situation is just... That hasn't played out yet, but it's still very... I just don't think it's that great. FYI, I got an Apple Watch. It's so cool. Oh, hold on. No, Siri. No, no, thank you. You can't really see because it's upside down, but there's my baby, Brandon Manilow. I keep him as my screenshot, the screen um, saver on my iWatch and on my iPhone, too. I love him. Anyways, okay, so... You know, we'll see how that goes, and 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 uh, Dr. Finn is. I I haven't I haven't figured out if it's because he didn't get the cure for Blackwoods or because he's a full on druggie. I don't know what's going on with him. I know he's hiding the fact that he's addicted to Zen Zen from uh, Hayden. I'm not quite sure why he's addicted. Is he addicted because it's an addictive drug, or is he addicted because he needs it still because he hasn't had a cure? And the whole thing with Brad. So Brad is like kind of blackmailing um, Dr. Finn. I don't, I, I, again, I wasn't really watching when Brad and Lucas had their, you know, front burner storyline, you know. So I, Lucas said that that's how Brad used to be. I don't know. I don't know. I've never, I don't remember that. I mean, I, I don't, I've never saw that. So I mean, I, 
it seems to me like it's out of left field, but according to Lucas, it isn't. So that, that, that could just be me because I'm not quite sure how that works. Anyways, I'm very excited about General Hospital. So thank you so much for logging on. I do appreciate it. Next show is going to be all about Vanderpump Rules. And I you can hashtag GH to talk. Oh, follow me on Twitter at Angel Benton. Hashtag GH to talk General Hospital. Hashtag Pump Rules to talk Vanderpump Rules. And I will see you soon. Peace out, wubba wubba wubba.